Harbour and Puff. Let it be something that everybody can be proud of. Yeah. This is wild. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I rise to support this criminal justice bill, which will help to make our constituents safer, including by imposing tougher sentences, new measures to fight knife crime, including zombie knives, tackling violence against women and girls, and giving law enforcement agencies the powers they need to respond to changing technology. In the last session, we legislated to ensure that the most serious offenders serve longer in prison, and through this bill we will impose tougher sentences for child sex offences by making grooming an aggravating factor and implement recommendations to legislate for an aggregating factor for murder at the end of a relationship. However, I would highlight the importance of judges imposing sentences that reflect the intent of this House. In 2022, we legislated to increase the maximum sentence for causing death by dangerous driving, yet sentences continue to be too short. My constituents, Summer Mace's mum, sister and stepfather were killed in an appalling incident. The offender only got a sentence of ten and a half years and could be out after seven years. So ministers and parliament need to make sure that the sentencing guidelines actually do what we are legislating for. And turning to some of the specifics in the bill, I particularly welcome the new power in Clause 22 to allow judges to compel offenders to attend sentencing hearings rather than hide away in their cells to avoid victims or their families and the powerful victim statements that are made. That abuses the victims and their families all over again. This is something I supported and campaigned for after a case where an offender in my northwest Norfolk constituency refused to attend the sentencing hearing when he was found guilty of sexual assault of a girl under 13 and intimidating a witness. Indeed, he, attended, he failed to attend most of the trial. By explicitly stating that reasonable force can be used by the police and escort of the staff, the powers to make offenders appear in court will now be very clear. However, as currently drafted within the legislation, this provision only applies to offenders awaiting sentence for an offence for which a life sentence must or may be imposed. That would not address the case from my constituency, given that the maximum sentence for that sexual offence is 14 years. Abusing a child is an incredibly serious offence. Therefore, I urge my honourable friend, the Minister, and uh, the Home Secretary to look at this provision again and expand the range of offences to which it applies, because it's important for all victims that offenders face justice. And it's important that there is punishment if this requirement is breached, and where the new power cannot be used, for example, if someone is so violent or disruptive that it's not possible, then there will be an additional custodial sentence of up to two years, which I fully support. An issue I want to raise is around bail, where I hope <coughs> ministers will, continue, will consider bringing forward a change through this bill to the Bail Act 1976 to allow the imposition of electronic monitoring in police bail conditions. In an adjournment debate that I led on that dangerous driving case and unduly lenient sentences on behalf of my constituents, I raised the offender who in 2013 was sentenced for three counts of causing death by dangerous driving. At the time of the crash, that offender was on police bail for a driving offence and he was subject to a curfew. He also had several previous convictions for motoring offences. But currently, the Bail Act 1976 in Section 3 allows courts to impose electronic monitoring as a condition of bail. However, electronic monitoring is not permitted in the conditions of bail or police bail. So when that offender broke his curfew and set out that night to drive, there was no electronic monitoring in place. Who knows, if it had been in place, this tragedy may have been avoided. Therefore, one of the changes my constituent and her family are campaigning for is to allow tagging, electronic tagging, in the cases of police bail. Their petition in support has got over 13,000 people backing it. And again, I ask the Home Office to look at this and whether they can bring forward a change in this bill to help reduce the likelihood of other offenders committing such appalling acts. There are many measures in the bill which I support and those to tackle a scourge of fraud are particularly welcome, given it is the most common crime and one that causes true misery for our constituents, particularly vulnerable and elderly people. And in particular, banning SIM farms, which are used by criminals to send thousands of scam texts at once will help to protect people, along with actions being taken by mobile networks as well. And of course, it's sensible the government can respond to developments by updating the list of banned technologies and articles through secondary legislation rather than having to wait for 
criminal justice bills, although they do come round rather frequently. To conclude, this bill includes new powers to help make our communities safer, to cut serious crime and to tackle antisocial behaviour. But there are specific improvements which I've outlined today, which I hope that the ministers will consider carefully and bring forward as this bill 